it in, but my gun's been acting funny. It used to be, I had to correct for a bit of lesson. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? G oh. I suppose that means you aren't here for the Saltuna. Oh, a shame. I'd been saving a bottle of iceberg aged whiskey for an occasion like this. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. I don't... Dang it, Captain, that's not right. Folks on Monarch shouldn't have to suffer just because the board says so. Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. I can tell your iconoclast friends have left their mark on you. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. A lot of good that'll do. I'll just find another reason to turn tail and abandon you. Not if we secure the proper safeguards first. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. And a Mantisaur problem, and a Marauder problem. Many, many problems, but they can all be solved with a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting with the Bolt 52, we won't need to advertise anymore. We can stop our transmissions altogether. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some 
dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. like the old bits outside of Edgewater. Incoming!
scavenging here and a Mad Queen showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void blasted mess. I ran in here and um now the door's locked. Little help? It's easier than it sounds, alright? Next time you get chased by Raptodons, you let me know the rationality of your decisions. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind giving me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy and... <laughs> hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, lady. Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nyoka. Sir, please stop. 
Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. Oh, yes. No doubt someone else was having a laugh at my expense before you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Yeah, in charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. What a question! Bureaucratic micromanagement is the only way anything gets done in Halcyon, and proper documentation is a key part of that. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. Help us with this final matter and we won't need to broadcast anymore. You have my word. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch. Illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to... encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. You really think so? I admit, I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. That's part of the problem. She has certain ambitions for Stellar Bay. And I fear my asking her would give her the leverage she's been looking for. Don't get yourself worked up, sir. It's perfectly natural to have a healthy fear of her. We really don't need to discuss this now, Celia. Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. <laughs> I knew you were the right person for the job. I suppose I'll leave you to it. You're just as rigid as the old executive committee. Why, we've hardly been able to get a clear message out until recently. When Graham finally shut up. It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. Indeed. That's why it's imperative that MSI be reinstated onto the board. 
If we can find proof that one of the companies on the board is also active on Monarch, that'll give me all the leverage I need. You have my word. Well, this is certainly a town, I think. Stalbert Green. Anything you want, they've got it. So long as you've got the bits. Come with me to Stella Bay. The boss lady told me to take the night off. Uh-huh. You blind, little bird? Or can you not see I'm busy? Why is it every sisty pig fucker who strolls into my town expects me to smile and shout awful friendly? Welcome to Fallbrook. Only nugget of paradise in this entire law-forsaken land. Like a void damn advert. Catherine, you're as welcoming as ever. Truthfully spoken. I do aim to properly represent my aforementioned nugget of paradise. I'll be sure to remember that, little bird. Wanna tell me what you need? Well, I'm half listening. Might be I know something about it. Might be someone hired my crew to blind drop supplies on the Northern Bridge. Might be they sure as shit weren't pirates. Now that I consider it, I ain't heard from my delivery team in far too long. Find them for me, and I'll pay you handsome. And I'll thank you kindly for it. I don't... if I may be so bold? Well now, here I thought those mantasaurs had peacefully exited the premises. But you're a simpler explanation. Thanks for the assistance. Name's Weston. Every once in a while, I set up shop along these here roads. You find yourself in need of resupply, you come on by. Care to purchase a thing or two? Uh 
I'd stake my reputation on this being an ambush. We ought to see if anybody's still alive. They might be too weak to call for help. Stay back. I may be wounded, but I'm still armed. How'd you get past my traps anyway? Just remember, I still got bullets, in case you get any funny ideas. What are you doing out here anyway? That feels a mite better. Wish I had something to give you, but... I gnawed through my last sprat worst an hour ago. A cave like this makes a handy place to store goods or hide out for a spell. And the traps usually keep gawkers out. Nice to know she cares. Catherine had us making drops for some big shot client out here. And before you ask, I don't know who they are. Or were. The whole point of making drops in the middle of nowhere was to keep their identity and whereabouts a secret. The Marauders knew we were coming. Rigged the bridge with explosives and everything. If they found us, my guess is they found the client, too. Last I saw, they were heading back up the hill. You'll see it on the right when you get out of here. If you've got the sand to go after him, I'm sure Catherine can reward you for your trouble. Me? I'm headed back to Fallbrook, just as soon as I've caught my breath.
please. You don't have to do this. Just let us down from here. The human in Look, I didn't mean what I said about your outfit. Very possible. I swear. Thank you, again, for retrieving the bolt. It's every bit as complex as I'd heard, but... I'm up to the challenge. Anyway, what can I do for you? Excellent timing on your part. I worked my fingers to nubs, but I finally completed the Bolt 52 form. I dare say it will be my second greatest achievement after the Reformations. You're getting ahead of yourself again. So I am. Do you have this cartridge? I knew there was something going on. This is exactly the proof we need. The board will have to welcome us back now. I'll transmit this data along with the completed Bolt 52 right away. After that, we'll sit back and quietly wait for the board to respond. That means no more broadcasts from us.
I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. What can I do for you? Do you hear that? It's the blessed sound of radio silence, which leads me to believe you have sweet, sweet news for me. Yes, indeed. I am back in business. But before we get down to it, might I ask how you handled the problem in the end? We did what we could as best we could. Should probably leave it at that. Hmm, is that so? I don't know how. The two are diametrically opposed and impossible to please. But it matters not how you fixed my problem, only that you did. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Terrific. I'll be here, waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. <laughs> 